Welcome to the Property Nomads podcast. We have an absolute treat for you today, uh, joined by two people. Uh, number one is Mark Champ of War Financial, who is regular podcast listeners you are going to be familiar with, and, and a special guest. We are joined by Andy Virgo, who is the Senior Business Development Manager at Lend Invest. Andy joined Lend Invest in 2017 as a Senior Business Development Manager with over 30 years' experience in the mortgage industry. Uh, Andy was instrumental in supporting Lend Invest's entry into the buy-to-let market, including the development of its product proposition, and has assumed full responsibility for the product as a whole. Now Director of Buy-to-let, Andy previously worked for uh, NatWest Bank and Interbay Commercial and successfully operated as a mortgage broker in his own property finance brokerage. And there's going to be a plethora of topics we discuss today. And um, Andy, or Mark, hello. Thank you for joining. And uh, Andy, uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to appear on the show. Absolute pleasure. Really enjoy uh, these uh, these sorts of things. So fantastic. But we have a lot to crack on with, a uh, lot of content, a lot of questions. I'm, I'm sure people are going to be wanting to wanting to ask but a little bit more about your background what got you into the world of mortgages in the first place well i was pretty much always involved in finance uh, once i realized i wasn't going to be a professional footballer um and uh, and was very much in asset finance um with bank of scotland asset finance got involved in some uh, uh, it software funding software leasing in the past um, but it wasn't until i uh, went to Nat West uh, that I really actually found my my niche within the in the market of finance and that was the real estate. Um, so I really enjoyed working in Nat West so much so I thought oh, I could do this myself. Um, so 2006, halfway through 2006, I set up my own brokerage, which was fantastic for a little while, and then the world stopped spinning, and uh, all my growth plans were then uh, reversed, and I was effectively sat in a bunker with a helmet on fighting the the, the bombs that were coming in from uh, from the credit crunch um but yet yeah, 2011 i uh, decided to move to to interbank commercial who were just coming back to market um I had a friendship with uh, andy reed uh, at the time who worked there and and we worked really closely together to bring interbank commercial back to market and and that's when mark and i first met incidentally uh, when when I was at Interbay Commercial, loved it, and then uh, along came Lend Invest with a fantastic proposition. Uh, they wanted to look to get the buy to let market uh, entry into the buy to let market, and uh, and I, I assisted massively in in trying to make that happen. And it's been very much a success story ever since. Perfect stuff. And with, with such a wealth of experience, uh, there might there might be people listening to this that. Uh, are, f- are familiar with the buy to let market, but they might have never heard of Lend Invest before. I don't take that as a slight. I'm just saying that some people might not have heard of Lend Invest before. So, in terms of your experience and where you are now, how are you looking to drive forward the buy to let market uh, through through Lend Invest? What what are, what are you uh, aiming for? Well, let's let's go backwards before we go forward. So, Lend Invest were, was a business that was established in 2008. Uh, Christian and Ian, the two uh, owners and still 75% uh, main owners of the business, had a vision that there was an opportunity in the bridging market to to help people as we came out of the credit crunch. Um, and uh, and the business was established as a buy-to-let, uh, as a bridging lender, sorry. Uh, development was added as, a, as another proposition, um, sort of, I think, 2016. Um, and then buy to let as a as a final um, add on 2017. So the the whole idea was was to be able to provide people with that opportunity to buy a property, buy land, build something, exit to a term loan. So we leverage off of our bridging business for a lot of our term loan buy to let um, uh, uh, completions. Uh, and of course, there's a massive intermediary market out there uh, that that knows uh, about the buy to let. Uh, side of the business and so we sit firmly within that sector that specialist uh, sector of lenders along the lines of your Kent Reliances your your fleets your foundations your paragons uh, and whatnot uh, of this world so it's very much a a growth year on year we've been growing and growing and growing um, and the the numbers are pretty significant now when it comes to how much we're lending uh, the applications that are coming in each week uh, we couldn't believe really when we sat down four years ago to to kind of 
put this together that we would be where we are today. It's absolutely fantastic. And can I just uh, interject there then? How? Why do you think brokers who predominantly are the ones who bring you the cases would go to lend invest as opposed to your your um, competitors? It's a number of reasons, Mark. I mean, at the end, of the, the the top the top is uh, we're not regulated by the PRA, so we don't have a banking license, which means we didn't we're not hamstrung by some of those PRA regulations that some of our peers have to abide by. So when it comes to uh, background portfolios or stress testing um, uh, serviceability, we're a lot more free. You know, we don't have to use the the old five and a half percent stress test. We use a five, and of course, we've got our pay rate products as well. But it's the technology, the technology that's that's significant. The aim of the business is to to disrupt. You know, um, we really want to be a business that uh, enables somebody to come to us and enjoy a frictionless experience. The the opportunity for them to to make a, an online application. Uh, we use technology in the background to drive that application through as quickly as possible. Um, our SLA of getting to formal off within fourteen days is frequently hit. Uh, or, or, or exceeded or improved on. Um, and as such, uh, we're gr- growing with experience. We're growing our lending policy. Uh, we're learning all the time. We're improving all the time. Uh, and uh, and on that basis, it's very good to see that lenders, uh, that the other um, brokers uh, see that growth and enjoy that um, experience with us. Yeah, and I think it, it, it sort of... Um, um shows how good lend invest are that i don't know what your slas are because i've never had to say is this within sla it just gets done and uh, you know the you you said it being frictionless it is but when you need somebody to jump in whether it be um my business development manager or um lady uh, abby or whether it's gene who's head of credit you can pick the phone up and say this is happening or this isn't happening or this is a quirk. And then it gets ironed out before a customer even sees it. So I, I think between myself and the the BDM and the underwriting team, whoever it may be, problems just don't um, arise in the customer's eyes. It's such a smooth journey. And it's because of the way Lend Invest and the people Lend Invest have got that it works that way. That's really kind of you to say, um, glowing reference. And, and what's, what makes it even nicer to hear is that we're not in the office. You know, since since March uh, 2020, we've all been working from home. Um, the operation side of the business has not suffered at all. We haven't closed. We've carried on lending. The only time we were we were hamstrung was when the valuers couldn't go out and visit property for valuations. So to hear that, you know to hear that people even today uh, are still enjoying the service that we're providing. Being able to do that working from home, it's only now that we're starting to move people back to the offices. Um, but no, the, the technology has been key and will continue to be key as we look to grow the business further. Andy, on, on that, uh, people, again, people that have been listening, they've been dealing with a multitude of, of companies. Can you give an example of, of the technology that Lend Invest have implemented and how and how that's worked? Yeah, so we... Uh, we enjoy being able to provide people with uh, the ability to to uh, take a photograph of their passport and then a selfie, um, send that into us for for ID. Um, we've got a, a, an app for that. Um, then there's the ability to uh, sign your paperwork on the go, you know, with e-signature. Um, uh, and then once you've made your application through your portal, in the background we've got uh, multiple. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, add-ons to our system that allow us to APIs, that's what they're called, uh, that allow us to kind of just draw down information from uh, different parts of, uh, of, of, of the, the, the finance world. I think we, we gather something in the region of in excess of 50,000 data points on every application. That's all done automatically. Even when it comes down to the uh, reviewing of the background portfolio, that takes just a couple of minutes now, as opposed to when we first started, it was a major chore. And then you've got, you know, the uh, open banking side of things. You know, we fully embraced the open banking uh, uh, opportunity and facility. So we don't ask for your, your proof of mortgage history or your bank statements. You know, there's it's a very light touch approach as far as a as a as a landlord or as a broker is concerned. Um, but ultimately, we present 
a uh, uh, an underwriter with a 360 degree case view, um, which enables them to just focus on the the, the the crosses. You know, we don't have to go and tick tick boxes all the way through. That's done for us by the technology. It's just the things that really need looking into. That specialist underwrites. Those are the only things that we end up uh, uh, having to, to to manage internally, uh, and therefore we can complete more applications per head. And as a profitable business as we are, and we are a very profitable business, floated on the stock exchange last year. Um, you know, being able to complete more applications per head will drive up EBITDA, and it drives up EBITDA, it drives up appeal, secures investment, and then we can just continue go and go and grow and grow. With my putting my investor hat on. Uh, so to speak. I mean, I'll uh, uh, sort of caveat here. I have done a few, or we have, I should say, my business partner and I have done a couple of applications with Lend Invest in the past. Hands up, we have found it very, very simple purely because of exactly what you just said. It's, as, 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 as I've said to Mark before, uh, and the general advice is always be prepared with a big stack of paperwork, portfolio information, personal information. That's important. You need that. But having gone through that process myself with Lend Invest online, I have found it quite straightforward as well. But going back to this investor hat as such, this all sounds very easy. Is that would you say, in terms of unique selling points, would you say that, that is Lend Invest USP, or do you have a another USP that you're able to? What, do you have another can, USP? Can I answer that one just from broker's point of view, just to start with, because obviously I choose between hundreds of lenders every day we we see them and for me the usp for lend invest it is their technology there are other lenders who do have technology but the people who are behind that technology is integral to the overall delivery of that technology because technology can only go so fast uh, far and it makes it smooth and seamless but the people behind it are the ones that are you know, greasing the wheels, and they're the ones that are making things get over the line. And there's pragmatic views. For instance, I don't know, things like title splits, where you've got a freehold that's been split into a title, and doing that at, uh, simultaneously alongside completion. That's a process that Lend Invest have got, and they understand that. Some lenders won't understand how that works, and they would take an age to get their head around it but you're doing it day in day out these types of things that are practical and the pragmatic views coming in alongside the technology which makes the usp in my opinion i mean as we've evolved we've learned you know we've grown our lending policy um as as, as the reiterate the iterations of our lending policy we've been able to bring in um uh, the, how can i put it the things that you guys feed back to us, the things that you're struggling with in the industry, um, you know, we're in a unique position whereby we can go and secure our funding. We've got funding lines with JP Morgan, Citibank and uh, National Australia Bank. And there are many, many others in the background that, that, that come to us offering us funding. And that's just for buy to let. So we have this unique opportunity to, to come up with a, a problem and our capital markets team will go and find a solution from a funder's point of view to be able to allow us to satisfy that problem. I mean, the other thing, I mean, we talk about USPs. I prefer to talk about key selling points rather than unique because we're all in the same market and it's really hard to reinvent the wheel when it comes to mortgages. Um, but we're able, we're very uh, light on our feet. We're able to adapt to the situation. I mean, we're sitting here now, we've got the Bank of England base rate has just gone up to 0.5%. Now, it went up recently and we kind of, with inflation, we had a feeling that the the, the original increase that we've experienced uh, was it last month or so um, that that we needed to offer landlords uh, a more long term view. So we bought out a seven year fixed rate product, seven year fixed pay rate product, and that's probably about forty percent of our applications at the moment. I mean, it's just incredible the amount of applications coming in from landlords that are looking to to fix for a longer term. I mean, those rates start at 2.88% at 70% loan to value um, with, uh, you know, so somebody not looking to kind of continually gear up on their portfolio, they're looking to have some consistency in, in terms of their mortgage payments. A seven year fix is fantastic and it's flying out. So what have we done now? Um, by the time this podcast goes out, our 10 year fix will be launched. You know, we've got a 10 year fix that's available 
on standard buy to let properties starting at 3.09 um, for 10 years at 65% loan to value. Um, you know, if you've got, and then if you want to put in the green side of things, the green EPC uh, type products that we've got, I mean, we're knocking um, basis points off of the, the rates and the fee. So 3.09 for a 65% fixed rate for 10 years with a 1% fee. And there's some pretty swish products out there. So it's a combination of having the right um, solutions from a, from a product point of view, being able to offer green mortgages, being able to offer holiday lets, multi-unit free of blocks, HMOs, small and large, making sure you value the large HMOs on an investment basis. And then those standard buy-to-let products that, that are priced uh, really well to attract attention, but also have that technology in the background to, to be flexible uh, and, and to help landlords grow their portfolios with us. You mentioned HMOs there, um, and we we see a lot of HMOs, and we've we've done some with you guys. Five bed HMOs is the grey area for me, and nobody knows whether they should be doing them as a, an investment valuation or a bricks and mortar valuation. So we've had conversations with head of credit uh, at your place, and there's a pragmatic view that appears to be taken. Now it's not a it's bricks and mortar. It's not. A, it's going to be investment. It's a, let's have a look at the property. Let's have a look at the way it's configured and what's been spent on it, and let's make a reasonable decision of which way it should be go should go. And I think that's something that shows the flexibility and the pragmatism by by LendInvest. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you you you've got a, an HMO market now. This, this very professional. I mean, there are a lot more professional landlords out there than there were, you know, five years ago. Um, and the professionalism of of that that HMO market means that people are buying uh, property and putting and putting together some fantastic um, uh, products for their for their tenants to move into, whether that be students or professionals. And where you have this kind of Article Four uh, area, where you have uh, regulation in certain parts of the country, and there's more and more regulation coming in for, for, for you know, regionally around the country in terms of article 4 and um and and properties having to you know having a degree of um constriction on there not being too many hmos in an area if it looks like an hmo and it smells like an hmo and it operates like an hmo and it can only be sold as an hmo then why not value it as an hmo so yes we are on uh, on an exception basis uh, making those um Making those decisions to value something that is a proper HMO in, on an on an investment basis, but the thing to consider is today's exceptions to tomorrow's policy. Um, so, so watch out for that as as we evolve through the year. Just one thing that you mentioned that Prick Myers over there, and he, he mentioned green mortgages. Uh, as is sort of Mark's explained a little bit about this, but you know you're in a great position to be able to explain uh, more. So I'm sure many people. Um, would be thinking the same. Can you do? Can you dive a little bit into what they are and maybe some of the products yeah. that LendInvest have on offer at the moment? Yeah. So, so uh, the la- landlords have a um, a deadline of April twenty twenty five to make sure that new property or property being let to new tenants must uh, have an EPC rating of D or higher. Um, so, as a lender, we want to make sure that our loan book is future proof. So we want to encourage uh, the the right landlords to come to us, and we're going to incentivize them by providing uh, what we're calling the the epic range of products. It's a bit of a play on the EPC with a with an I in the middle. So the epic range uh, will reward uh, a, a landlord with a ten basis points discount off of our rate and a twenty five basis points discount off of our fee. Now. So there are landlords with some some significant portfolios, and they're having to uh, uh, try and work out now what they can do with those those EPC ratings or those properties with an EPC rating that's below D and eventually below C. Um, So there are some landlords, if you've got like, I don't know, a flat in the middle of Edinburgh that you can't do anything to, um, you know, to, to improve it, the EPC rating. Then you've you've potentially got some stock that that is being sold back into the resi market. Um, is it commercially viable to spend money on your buy to let to get the EPC rating up to a level where it's acceptable to a lender? 
So there's some decisions going on, and and there this is typical. What typically is going to happen is it's going to be a little bit last minute dot com, and all of a sudden people are going to start thinking, oh my god, we've got this new regulation coming in. 2025 seems so far away. Well, next year's 2023. You know, we, we it, it takes a little time to to make changes, to make improvements, uh, and you have to plan to exit some of these properties. If you've got give notice to tenants and whatnot. So we're doing a lot of um, uh, of, of sort of um, thought leadership pieces on trying to get brokers talking to their landlords about their landlord clients about the EPC ratings of their property. I mean, you've got 27 Tech as a sourcing system that's now got an EPC filter. You've got a, a green filter on the um, uh, on one of the other ones, Tri Gold. Uh, they've got a green filter. So we're starting to see uh, brokers being able to search for. Uh, green uh, mortgages, which uh, in- invariably are cheaper, um, and uh, those are, um, you know, rewarding people for having the right uh, attitude to this carbon zero um, situation that we need to be finding ourselves in in twenty twenty in twenty fifty. So, Rob, would you, as an investor yourself, would you look to a property and check out the EPC and base an uh, investment decision upon it? Uh, hang, I hold my hands up. I would say I would say that I would now. Uh, an advantage, I guess, that I've got is I'm also a domestic energy assessor, so qualified to do. So EPCs are of interest to me in the first place. Uh, yes, I I personally would. Uh, the, the point that Andy's made and the, the, some whoever's come up with this idea again, it's one of those things where, on the face of it, it's a relatively decent idea. Fair play. But you got to look at me. And most of the stock in the UK is going to be what Victorian, you know, pre nineteen hundred. The biggest determination in the biggest determining factor on an energy performance certificate is the age of the building. So there's not a lot we can do about that unless they change the algorithm. So that's that is what it is. And then from there you go into you know if you've got a solid brick property, you know what's the best way to insulate it? Well, yeah, external wall insulation is. Is one way to go about it. I mean, that's very expensive. I mean, yes, you can upgrade, you know, boiler or the air source heat pump and, you know, insulation here, insulation there. That will help. Uh, the other challenge you've got with the current EPC sort of structure is um, it doesn't overly like electric only um, buildings, uh, to be fair, unless they're like really up to date, high retention storage here so there's a lot of stuff for companies to work out in the background and i know from speaking to uh stuart fairly at elmhurst uh, that they're lobbying the government on a f- fair few things because uh, it's going to create a lot of issues and uh, most epcs are these anyway and um you know from a landlord's point of view it's going to take a lot of investment to upgrade those properties so as any investor should look at you know what's my rate of return on that I've got to spend twenty thousand pound on external wood insulation, but I'm only going to, I don't know, increase the rent by twenty pound a month. I mean, quick maths, that's what less than a percent, you know, ROI. Maybe it's not good. So yeah, the, the, I get the idea, um, but how they go about it, it is some things have got to change. But as as Andy's correct said, it's going to be a lot of last minute dot com, which isn't a surprise in the UK. But then you've also got to consider. So you've got your energy um, environmental impact. And you've got your energy efficiency. So those two ratings, uh, only only really the the um, environment, the energy efficiency is being kind of taken into consideration at the moment. So you've got to keep an eye out for what's coming down the road from government, which is going to be what's your carbon footprint, um, and and that's another measure that lenders are going to have to take into consideration. Um, we've future proofed our products, so we, we've gone to our funders, we've got permission to launch our green mortgages, uh, and we've we've sold it to them based on the fact that potentially down the road you could be looking not only at the impacts but also the efficiency of a, of a property so uh, that's already built into our proposition but yeah watch this space um carbon footprint that's going to be the next measure wouldn't surprise me at all to be fair andy in terms of um other products and uh, before we sort of wrap up because i say we covered an awful lot of great content there um, is there anything else you can see coming down the line, or is any anything else from lending investors coming down the line that cus- potential customers need to be aware of? Yeah, so as as we 
we can we can iterate our our existing propositions so we can look to change and tweak our criteria to to win more business to to service more clients to be more uh open to dealing with with our our existing borrowers as repeat borrowers you know we have some significantly uh significantly sizable portfolios in our on our loan books already and we want to continue growing those so watch out for for a better way for us to service those landlords that are looking to bring their portfolios to us on mass let's not forget that five years ago you know the the pra made those uh changes to the underwriting standards so that people kind of fit slipped into five-year fixed rate mortgages five years ago so those customers are now up and available for for remortgage in a very different landscape to what was available uh, five years ago in terms of products um there's there's also you know alternative markets that we can look to enter into enter into. So we'll look at some we're looking at currently moving into some different markets and slightly off topic ish, but it's still property related. By the end of the year, we'll have launched our um, specialist homeowner mortgages. So uh, we will be looking to not only assist the landlords of this world, but also those uh, that require a mortgage for themselves via the specialist market. There's an awful lot coming down the road. Uh, the money that we raised on our uh, on our float last year on the stock exchange, we've invested all of it into technology. Um, so it's about uh, iteration of product, iteration of criteria, moving into new areas. I'm not going to give too much away on that, but you can have the resi one, um, and then grow the grow the, uh, the, the 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 proposition internally in terms of our, uh, how we service these these loans. Fantastic stuff. So a lot to look forward to. Uh, I just want to say a massive thank you for your time and in, in appearing on the Property Nomads podcast. Uh, and if people need to get hold of you and they're interested in working with Lend Invest, uh, I'll include both of you. Uh, should they contact you or do they need to go through a broker such as Mark? Yeah, so we're uh, an intermediary only led business. Uh, we don't give advice ourselves, uh, preferring to deal with the, the, the array of very experienced mortgage brokers out there. Of which Mark and War Financial uh, are a huge supporter, as as you kind of heard in the beginning. You know, Mark had a glowing reference for us, and and he has his own uh, slant on some of our key selling points. And he's dealing with the whole of the market, um, so definitely contact Mark, uh, and Mark and his team will be able to give best advice. Fantastic stuff. Uh, well, again, I really, really appreciate that for listeners. As usual, we'll put all links in the show notes. So you'll see show notes to the Lender Invest website and also Mark's contact details there as well. Uh, Mark, Andy, uh, thanks very much for your time. Thank Thanks, you. Rob.